Hi everyone, I am Anonymous Traveler from Intellectual Exercise. Today, I will talk about neurotransmitters and how to improve neurotransmitter production. My channel is focused on improving mental development. There are two approaches for that goal. One is metaphysical approach and another is science-based approach. What I believe is both of them are important. In terms of science-based approach, I have discussed diet strategies to maximize mental performance in previous videos. I discussed diet first since diet is a foundation stone for science-based approach. Diet is something you need to experiment first to find out the best one for you. And after that, one need to look into the secondary issues such as neurotransmitters. So, what are neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters are chemical molecules synthesized in the brain and the gut and carry the signals between brain cells. So basically, neurotransmitters enable neurons to communicate and exchange important information for our survival. There are hundreds of neurotransmitters and some of them such as serotonin, acetylcholine, dopamine, norepinephrine, GABA, glutamate play very important roles. And they can be categorized into two groups. First, excitatory neurotransmitters and they have excitatory effect on the neuron. Second, inhibitory neurotransmitters and they have inhibitory effect on the neuron. Maintaining a good balance between excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters is crucial for our health. The brain is constantly working to maintain the balance in neurochemical systems by continuous neurobiological and synaptic shift. For example, inhibitory neurotransmitters come to the driver's seat before we go to bed and during the daytime excitatory neurotransmitters come to the driver's seat. This switch of the gear happens naturally when we are healthy but for whatever reason if the gear is broken we would develop serious problems. And any of one neurotransmitter can upset the entire balance of the brain. There are multiple mechanisms involved with the imbalance of the neurotransmitters. And the following ones are the major factors. Number one, too little production of one or more of neurotransmitters. Number two, too much production of one or more of neurotransmitters. Number three, premature reabsorbing process of neurotransmitters. Number four, premature deactivation process by hyperactive enzymes. And neurotransmitter imbalances can cause many illness including cognitive function decline, 
compromise the focus, anxiety, headache, chronic pain, insomnia, irritable bowel syndrome, hormone imbalance, depression, and fibromyalgia. Now, let's look at the main causes of neurotransmitter imbalances. Number one, certain drugs, especially cholesterol-lowering medications. Number two, excessive use of stimulant such as caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. Number three, prolonged period of stress since it can deplete certain neurotransmitters. Number four, toxic substances like heavy metals. Number five, poor diet. Neurotransmitters are made in the body from protein and certain nutrient called cofactors. I will talk about cofactors a little bit later. Number six, poor gut ecosystem and digestive issues. Our gut is our second brain and it produces neurotransmitters as well. For example, the majority of serotonin is actually produced in the gut. Also, without good digestion, we cannot absorb all the necessary amino acid and cofactors. Then, what should we do to maintain a proper production and a good balance of neurotransmitters? First, we need to pay attention to what we eat. Eating enough protein is absolutely necessary because we need amino acid such as tyrosine and tryptophan. And also, we need various cofactors of neurotransmitter production such as choline, folate, zinc, iron, omega-3 fatty acid, and vitamin B6 and B12 and vitamin C and D. So take multivitamin along with omega-3 fatty acid and vitamin B and D supplement as well since multivitamin does not have enough amount of vitamin B and vitamin D for proper neurotransmitter production. Also, getting enough sleep and maintain a regular hour to go to bed is necessary. And regular exercise and yoga helps a lot. And meditation is very useful as well. Since going through a prolonged period of stress is very harmful for neurotransmitter balance, handling stress with meditation is a big help. But meditation also has another interesting effect. According to a study by Sarah Laza, a neuroscientist at Harvard Medical School, eight weeks of daily meditation increased the size of pons, which is an area of the brain stem where a lot of regulatory neurotransmitters are produced. Thanks for listening and all the best.